And it's just like, if you think about it, with a boat in a river, right? It's just like a boat in the river. We're supposed to be going against the grain of the current, right? And the Lord is supposed to be powering us through that, right? We're supposed to be being powered through to go the opposite way. However, if you ain't connected to God and you turn that motor off, you're going to just start going with the current. And that's what we called being backslidden. Now you're sliding back, going the direction of everybody else when we're supposed to be holy, separate, set apart, set apart sacred. So we're going to look different as believers automatically. Everybody wants to be different in some type of way. You're going to be different when you follow Jesus. In the, in the- Welcome to the plug. talking about mentorships, we're talking about friendships, and we're talking about situationships, mm-hmm. romantic ships, all of those different types of ships. And we've really been talking about romantic relationships yeah. for all of February, right? And now in March. But we think it's important because it's a lot of pressure for you all to get in relationships. Y'all agree? How many people don't agree? All right. How many people... How many people you want to boo, but you ain't got one? Nobody want to put their hand up for that. (laughs) All right, we got one hand in the middle of the camera, too. Like, all right, y'all go follow her at if you're interested. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But um, I I think we have some good stuff that we are going to discuss today. Somebody tell me what does it mean to be holy? What does holy mean? All right, where are my mic runners at? Where are my mic runners? Where are my mic runners? All right, Joy, uh, get somebody real quick. Talk up. It means to be sacred. Sacred. I like that. I like that. I like that. Anybody else? Anybody else? You got another definition. What does it mean to be holy? Yeah, let me get him right there. What does it mean to be holy? Separate or set apart. Separate or set. That boy been paying attention, huh? You better. Okay. I like that. Both of y'all, that's what Drake's and you. That's good. Yes, that's good. good that's good. Holy means to be different, to be set apart, to be unique, right? And a ship, when you look up that root word, it actually means to create, to form, to fashion. So each relationship is trying to form something in you. The question is, what re- What is trying to be fashioned and formed in you in the relationships that you're in? What is really, even if you think about it, your relationship with media, what is it that's trying to be fashioned in you? Your relationship to music, what is it that that artist that you have a relationship with, because some of y'all listen to these artists more than you listen to your parents, more than you listen to God, more than you even listen to your best friend. Right? So you have an intimate relationship with some of these artists. But what are they trying to form within you? What are they really trying to like? If you were to take their music and you had to listen to it, it's like, what do you think their main message would be? Just give me a couple of them. That money, they're trying to form. Yeah, okay. They're trying to form the ideal of Making money, that's one thing. What else? Be honest, be honest, be honest. What is it? What is it? Huh? Kill your ops. All right, all right. Kill your ops. I got that. What you got? Being in certain relationships. Yep, yep, yep. They definitely try to do it. What else? What else? What? What you got? Drugs? Oh, yeah. They definitely try to form that in you. Lean, all that type of stuff. You know, a lot of these rappers, I was just listening to a little interview from, um, who was that, Lil Dirk, right? And he was talking about, why y'all smack y'all teeth? Dang, y'all don't rock with Dirk? All right. Um, but anyway, <laughs> nah, all right, all right. Anyway, something that he was saying is, he don't even do lean. He gave that up a long time ago, but he still rap about it in his music. Ain't that like, and y'all talk about Christians being hypocritical? Like, ain't that a little hypocritical? But y'all don't rock with him anyway, so I guess that don't matter. All right, what else is it trying to form in you? What else is it trying to form? Material things? Like what? 
Um, yeah, like, like, well, I'm not perfect, so I don't care. Like, I sometimes I listen to Young Boy. He be talking about his clothes, like he be uh-huh. wearing, like, rocking the V long stuff like that. So, uh-huh. you know, okay, like, but you know that's something that they talk about, like clothes, cars, even jewelry. Like, it's just something that they talk about. That's something that's modern in the culture that we live in today. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Yeah. It's trying to form that. I do want to challenge you with one thing though Eli right I want to challenge you with one thing because we oftentimes use well I mean I ain't perfect so you know like nobody's expecting anybody to be perfect God isn't expecting you to be perfect either however you don't have to be perfect to not indulge or engage not no oh you're talking about in the past like in the past you wasn't as perfect in got you as in like a couple yeah. hours ago right I, 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 cool, cool. i'm messing with you i'm messing with you amen 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 see that's faith right there he's using faith to say i no longer listen to that even though he just was amen. listening to it this morning all right y'all somebody <laughs> that's called faith nah let me stop let Not me stop this morning my, my man was in the spirit y'all heard my boy praying he was going it, in yeah he you definitely was this morning you definitely was for real for real and so relationships are powerful and so we think that relationships should be sacred they should be you should be picky about who you let in your circle for sure you should be like very choosy on who you get in a relationship with like Everybody that look like they're your friend should not, just because they funny, don't mean they should be your friend. And I know some of y'all just get in friendships and relationships because nobody else want to talk to you. It's like, and at least they want to. Like, at least, at least she look in my way. Like, that's not a good reason, bruh. Right? Like, that's not a good reason, young lady, yeah. right, to get in a relationship just because they look in your way. You got anything? Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about this, but life is like water, and the best way to navigate through water is by ship, and we believe the best way to navigate through life in a beautiful, full, abundant way is through good relationships. First, a relationship with God, and then, of course, you know, good relationships that help sharpen you toward the things of God. Yeah, that's good, because that number one ship should be God. Yeah, yeah. If you ain't got that right, then you got some things to really be concerned about and and really work on. Let's read this scripture, Matthew 24, 37 through 39. You want to read? Yeah. If you got your Bibles, hurry up and flip to that real quick. (laughs) Oh, you got it on the screen? All right. I just held my Bible. (laughs) (laughs) But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood... There were, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and they took them all away. So also will, this, will the coming of the Son of Man be. And so this scripture is saying this. This is Jesus talking. And Jesus was saying that, but as in the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. He's saying, as the day, like, Jesus is going to come back one day. Everybody know that, right? Like you heard of that before? Who's heard that Jesus is going to come back? Right? You heard that Jesus is going to come back. He's going to come back. And when he does, he said the earth is going to look just like the days of Noah. Like things are going to be the same, right? Yeah, things are going to be the same as Noah's day was. And so one of the things that we noticed in Noah's day was what? What was one thing that you would say? Yeah, that things were very... Violent, right? Violence was a big one, right? I see a lot of new faces, and we remember the story of Noah, right? That all of these things were happening, and God was so displeased with what was going on in the earth that he sent a flood, and it took out so many people, I mean, everything, except for the two of each animal that got on that boat, and Noah and his family, they were saved because they entered into this ark. And Jesus is saying, When he comes back, things will be as they were in the days of Noah. Right. And in those days, every single person had corrupted their way, had gone away from God and decided to follow everything else but the Lord. And like you said, there was so much violence. And what else was 
a major issue in that time. Uh, another one was corruption. Yeah. It said in Genesis that the days were corrupt and people corrupted their own ways. Yes. And so it was violence and it was a lot of corruption. And it said that people weren't even concerned with God. They were eating, they were drinking, they were giving in marriage. They were just living life. They was not concerned with the things of God because Noah was preaching to them saying, yo, it's going to rain. Get right with God. Turn around, like repent, like get right. And nobody would listen, right? And we are like that voice to you right now as well. Saying, yo, yo, don't get so caught up in everything that's going on today with relationships, with uh, school, with sports. Don't get so caught up that you miss the boat. Yeah. Because if you don't get on that boat, it just like, just like what happened with those people, everybody else passed away except for Noah right. and his family. We're destroyed. Because he had a relationship with God. And since that ship was right, he was able to get on the ship, the ark, and his entire family was able to be saved. So we want to be that type of person. We want to be those type of people that have a relationship with God. Can I add to that? You know, something else that Jesus says about these same times before he returns, he says that, before his return, there will be a great falling away mm. that many people who once walked with him will fall away and turn away from him before that time. And like that's it's so scary to think about. Jesus is like, I won't come back until there's a great falling away. And so I think that's a major reason why there's going to be a lot of corruption. And, and we see a lot of corruption and violence and all of those things. Because so many people will fall away from the Lord, but may we not be those people. May we not be those who fall away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. there, there's going to be two things. A great falling away of people who were with Christ. This is, what, this is scripture. This Jesus says before he returns. But there's also going to be a great pulling in of those who were not. And so... We need to be the people ready and the ones who are sticking with him, who are ready to mature so that we can even help those who will come. We can't be the ones to fall away. There's a great temptation, pulling, pulling. So many of you even now, pulling you to go away from the things of God. Do not be the ones who will fall away. Don't get caught up in the crowd of the great falling away, but recognize it. Oh, wait. Scripture talks about this, and I'm right now being one of those people who are, who are going the other way, but I don't want to be. And I'm going to lock in like never before in this time especially. And it's just like, if you think about it, with a boat in a river, right? It's just like a boat in the river. We're supposed to be going against the grain of the current, right? And the Lord is supposed to be powering us through the that. Of the Spirit. Right? We're supposed to be being powered through to go the opposite way. Yeah. However, if you ain't connected to God and you turn that motor off, you're going to just start going with the current. Yeah. And that's what we call being backslidden. Now you're sliding back, going the direction of everybody else when we're supposed to be holy separate, set apart, set apart Amen. sacred. So we're going to look different as believers automatically. Everybody wants to be different in some type of way. You're going to be different when you follow Jesus in a, in a good way yeah. because his way is the right. He is the way, yeah. the truth and the life. So you're going to automatically go down the right path. It says that there are two different roads that you can go down. Yeah. You have the narrow road, which a lot of people don't travel. And then you have the wide road, which leads to destruction that everybody's going down. It's like, who in here like, y'all be paying attention when your parents be driving you around, like where you be going and whatnot? Like y'all be, y'all know street signs? Or y'all know back ways? Y'all be paying attention to stuff like My that? My son's like that. Right? So I used to really pay attention to that when I was younger, like a whole oh, bunch. Right? Yeah, I used to really pay cute. attention to that. I remember my grandma was taking me to school one day, and she didn't know where she was going. <laughs> right? And I was like in kindergarten. I'm like, you're going the wrong way. And she's like, be quiet. I know where I'm going. <laughs> right? We, we went around like 30 minutes, and she turned the car around. 
And I was like, see, now we're going the right way, Grandma. <laughs> you were like right? Harvard. Bro. Yeah, I, I was just like, <laughs> like that. But when you know your roads and stuff like that, when things are going, when traffic is caught up on the highway and you really know you can go down the side street. You can get off the exit and go down the side street that a lot of people ain't going down to get to your, the back way, right? And so God is offering us a different way. Well, let me say this, because with that same example, right, what's so attractive about the wrong way is that something about it feels luring. It feels familiar. It feels like right. It seems right, right? Because that's what the scripture says. It's the way that seems right to a man that leads to destruction. There, there was a time when I was driving and I, I knew I was supposed to go the way that I was going. Like I was going the right way. And then I saw a street name that I recognized. Something about it was familiar. And because it was familiar, it lured me to go that way. So I'm like, this is probably the right way. And so because I was familiar with it, the wrong way seemed right. Sometimes that's what happens because we're familiar with it and we get familiar um, because of what's being influenced to us. Right. So even if you, you weren't a fighter, but you're constantly listening to knock if you buck or whatever, that was what it was for me when I was growing up. Um, Wait, they don't listen to that. Anymore. Okay, well, whatever. I don't know. Give me some fight, whatever fight. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. That's just like, oh. But anyway, so it's yeah, like we knuckin' and bucking, <laughs> and ready to fight. I went. To, all right, go not on. Not that I know all those lyrics. That's a Holly, calm down. <laughs> Why is she in the back? You like said she was. You <laughs> said, <laughs> said she's gonna pull them boots out. <laughs> but if you're not a fighter, but that's what you've been listening to, so something about it is Seems familiar. Familiar. And then you get into a situation and you know the right way, but the familiar way is calling you because you've familiarized yourself with the wrong way. You're going to go that way because there's safety. There feels, something feels right about what's familiar. Because you haven't familiarized yourself with the word of God. You Come ain't familiarized on. yourself with him. So the world's way seems right. My bad, I ain't mean to that's cut you good, off. Though. But the world way seems right because that's what you're always hearing. Oh, it's okay to have sex Come before on, marriage. Oh, that seems familiar. Yeah, this must not be wrong. Oh, it's okay. It's same-sex attraction. That's normal. You were born that way. No, it seems familiar, but that ain't the right way. Right. It seems like because they shoving it down like your throat and it seems right. familiar, it's like, man, something seems right about that. No, it's just familiar to yeah, you. Yeah, it's just that's familiar. That's a very, Isn't go on, my fire? bad. I ain't... No, that's all I had. I oh, mean, that was fine. That was really fine. Yeah, so... Let's jump into what we want to talk about today, right? Let's talk about it, right? Um, yeah, that was just the introduction, my bad. Um, right, service is almost over. <laughs> All right. By the way, to our first time visitors, hi, I'm Eliza. I'm Nehemiah's wife. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, yeah, she's just not a random girl that's up here. Uh, <laughs> this is my wife. All right. Um, we have a belief. We have a, me and Eliza hold a belief that at you all's age, most teenagers don't need to be in a relationship, right? That, that's the belief that we held. And we have reasons behind that belief, right? But I just wanted to do something real quick because I know we have some great debaters in the room. I wanted to get just like two, I wanted to get should I do two? Yeah, because of time's sake. I wanted to get two people, right? I don't think most teenagers should be in a relationship. I want somebody change to... Change your mind. Change my mind. Change my mind. The mic is here. Change my mind. Change my mind. Come change on, come my, on up. I, I want you to change my mind. Just come. If you want to, you could just stand, stand in the middle. Stand right here. Stand right come in the middle. Up. Change my mind. Just change my mind if you disagree. Like, just do you, change does it. anybody disagree? Even if you're not ready to come up here and change your mind. Some of y'all disagree. Do you disagree? Some of y'all disagree. Then come change our mind. Change my mind. Change I am mind. willing. I am willing to change enough, my mind if you change. have a good enough reason. There we go. Right, my right. man. Hey. Let go. Let go. Hey, all right. Get, give him the all mic. Right. Right there. Uh, what's, what's your name, sir? Alton, ooh, and he's confident, bold I'm with it too. No, 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 let him, let, let him, him say. I want to look him in his eyes. I'm saying, let him, he talking. can look at you and us 
and them. All right, come on. Yeah, that's fine. Stands this way. All right, come on over here so that come they can see right you. Come stand right here, too. Alton. Change my mind. I, no, I'm just kidding. All right, go ahead, though. All right. Well, I feel like you should be in a relationship as a team because, like, personally, I feel like a guy needs a girl to rely on, and she also needs a guy to rely on him. And, like, you know, Uh-huh. So, uh, no, my bad. Let me have you finish. My bad. I don't want to be in the, the one in the kitchen cooking all the time. I need a girl to like, cook for me. Oh. No, we're talking about right now. You talking about right now? Okay. You need somebody to cook for you now? Okay. You need, you need a girl in your kitchen cooking for you right now? How old are you, Alton? 15. <laughs> Alton, you got your own apartment? No, 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 no. I'm just saying, like. You mean in the future? Like, now. Like, I could do that now. Okay, I get okay, what he's saying. Okay, like okay. he 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 don't he wants somebody to come over and make his ramen noodles. He ain't trying to make his own ramen. <laughs> come on! Oh my! God. All right, no, no, come stay right on. here. All right. Did, so wait, I so, want to see if no, no. Oh, had a to him. real quick, real okay. quick. I just had a couple questions for you, right? Um, so you used the key word, Alton. Uh, you said you wanted somebody to rely on. Give, can you kind of define, can you, uh, can you talk about that a little more? What do you mean by rely on? Like you need a couple of <laughs> All right, so like what I mean by that is she needs a couple hundred dollars. I got it. <laughs> oh, now, and now, and now that, oh, Alton, ooh, Alton. Alton? Some of y'all is, all right, go on, go on, my Some bad. Some y'all are like, what, how old are you, Alton? Okay. If she needs a ride to somewhere, I got you. Like, you drive, Alton? In like a year. Come on. Alton, do, hold on, hold on. Alton, do you have a job? Not yet. So he, he got you $100. He got you a ride, but not a car and a job just yet. All right, so um, I, I feel like some of the points that you made are somewhat valid, right? You, you want somebody to rely on. And biblically... Right? Biblically, it does say that it is not good for man to be alone. Right? It does say that. However, <laughs> however, from what you're saying, with, we're wanting to, people to live holy lives unto the Lord. Right? We want people to live righteous lives unto the Lord. And so, relying on just another human being because you didn't mention anything about relying on God, right? You didn't mention anything about him first. And so that has to be the first reliance. You got to be able to rely on him for all your needs and especially for your needs right now because you ain't got no job. So there's no way that you even going to be able to, unless you got a side hustle, you probably do crypto. Ooh, you work for your money. Okay. You'd be hustling. What you be doing? Mike, Mike. I can do whatever. (laughs) <laughs> he, he, he his hustle. All right, all right. Um, that, that was smooth, but, but, but those reasons aren't good enough reasons for me to believe that somebody needs to be in a relationship at this age. Like you can have friends. Right, that's what friends are that. for. That, can, but, but a romantic relationship, yo, my cousin can that just wasn't, a, like, that wasn't compelling enough. So you haven't changed my mind. So you could go sit down. <laughs> Y'all give my hand. Get out of here, Alton. That was still good, though. That was still good. I need one more, one more person. I know Chris. Oh. He ready. He got a mic. All right, he got and a mic. Then we got to get two girls, right? No, just one girl. Okay. All right, because we still got to get to the message. Oh, true. All right, go ahead. Um, my name oh, is Jaylen. Go on. Yeah, my yeah, mom. Jaylen. <clears throat> All right, Jaylen. So I feel like, you know, when you're a team, right, especially like if you're a dude, you got a little, right, it takes time to figure out, like, a girl, like, a woman. Like, I don't think you should just, just, I don't think you should be taking it serious. But, like, you shouldn't be, like, 24 and never talk to a girl. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. okay. So, I, I don't disagree with a lot of what you're saying. You should, as a young man, you should know how to talk to a girl, but right? some of y'all just be doing that. That's not talking to a girl. Yeah, like... I mean, like, like, you know, like I... Some of the things y'all showed me that night, even at the lock-in, yeah, I went up to her and I said, that's not talking to a girl. That's, so make it make, do you actually talk to a girl? Like, do you actually... Okay, okay. So we don't, we're not saying, we're not saying, let me clarify, that you should never talk to girls if you're exactly. a guy. Or a girl, or a guy, or a girl should never talk to a guy, 
right? It's healthy to have relationships, not romantic boyfriend, but it's healthy to have that because, like, girls, like, at y'all age, they, like, way smarter than y'all anyway, so, like, they could help you out a lot. <laughs> they could help you out a lot with stuff like that. So I agree. I, I agree with that. But I'm talking about, like, a serious, because the point of a relationship is for marriage. And so if it's not for that, according to you, then it's like not nothing real serious. If it's not serious, then what are you doing it for? Because Michael Jackson said his mom told him not to break young girls' hearts. (laughs) Right? And so (laughs) you don't, eventually what's going to happen though, somebody's going to catch feelings and then if it's not serious, somebody's heart going to get break. Right? And it's either going to be yours or it's going to be hers. Right? Is that facts? Yeah. That, that, and that happens all the time. You see that all the time. But right? it builds character development. Like, it makes you a person. It builds it builds character? character? Heartbreak? I ain't going to lie. I ain't never had no heartbreak from a girl that built a character in me. Like, yeah, I don't know. Well, wait, hold on. So, like, going through a tough, a difficult like a breaking a relationship, I can, I can see how that could build character. I, I can. How? T- explain to me. Um, the way that you move through it. I feel like for me, when I had my little break, the way that I moved through it, I drew nearer to God. Like I, there's so many, many How many I, kids is doing that? That's a fact. But I'm just, I mean, kids I'm just, is like I'm saying crying has, to God on the floor after they got a breakup. I'm oh. saying it has the potential to. Oh, okay. I'm saying we can't say that it doesn't have the potential to build character. Anytime you go through something heart-wrenching, it has the potential to build character in you. Okay. Anything. Now, if you put yourself in those situations, you shouldn't, but it's still. Go ahead. So say you like a pretty girl, right? But she ain't right with God. Right. So she a hood rat. Okay. If she, if she break your heart, then you're going to be like, oh, I'm not going to mess with that type of girl no more. I'm going to change. I'm going to start changing. But if, you, if she never broke your heart, then you probably would still be messing with the hood rat. Okay. Ooh. All right. All right. All right. All right. Now, I, I like that. See, those are those. Um, this, no, no, I like that. These are, these are what you call like, these are those like, Hood bars, right? Those hood sayings, right? <laughs> that be sounding yeah, really yeah, yeah. good, right? Sounds they be good. sounding really good. But, let's just but this down. let me just really quickly. There was a wise man that said, mm-hmm. there was a wise man that said, right? You can learn from your mistakes, but it's better to learn from other people's mistakes. And so it's better to learn something in advance so you don't have to go through that. Because what ends up happening is now you're wasting time with that hood rat, right? And now if she's a real hood rat, like you're saying, that means she's going to be trying to entice you to do other things as well, right? And so we're saying, right, yes, it's good to learn from your situations, but it's better to learn from somebody else's situation. And how about this? I think also... Dang, no clap for that though, huh? Yeah, All right. sorry. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I start talking right away. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Yeah, Nehemiah. No, nah, I'm just saying that the hood rat one was, that was good though. Right. But I think also <laughs> it's like for that situation, right? You jump into a relationship with a hood rat to learn that you shouldn't date with a hood, a hood rat. Or you could just follow the word of God <laughs> that says don't equally yoke with somebody who's like that in the first place. It's, there's somewhere that's already teaching you not to do that. Why do you have to go see for yourself? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It, it like hurts a lot more when you have to learn from your. It's actually not the best thing to learn from experience when you can learn from other people's experience. And Jesus, God has given us a playbook, bro. Like, so that we don't have to go through all of that, right? Because what if the hood rat got an STD? <laughs> I'm just now saying. Then you learn that you shouldn't be Then you learn, STDs, like, dang it, I still... should have. Right, I should have wrapped it up. Right, I should have strapped it. No, no, I, I know you're not. No, I'm not. He's like, no, wait, no, wait, no, not none me. Of this, none of this nah, is nah. toward you. Yeah, yeah, no, not toward in general. you. <laughs> okay, my guy. None of this is toward you. <laughs> he's like, wait a second. I know. He like, chill out. All right, but but it's better to learn from other people's experiences, and it's better to learn from what God is saying from the top. Right? You feel that? That makes sense. Yeah. 
That was a good point, though. I like that. Yeah, I, I like, like it. That. You didn't convince me, though, but that was a good point. That was a good point. All right, all right. I need one young lady. I know Kristen is just itching over there. Kristen I know she's itching. One of them, Kristen or Joy. Joy's got the mic. All right, then let they, Joy. They boot, I know they boot up. They think they Let Joy up. go then. All right. Y'all think y'all in love? We know we I want to hear from my, my girls. Okay. Well, hi, guys. I'm Joy. Oh, man. Um, Service is almost over. This I, is yeah, no, I already know. We've been new. It's, I've been here as long as he has. I'm, he, he don't change his mind for nothing. But, <laughs> no, no. I, you can change my That's mind. Funny. You're not open. That's funny, <laughs> Joy. Oh, my God. I'm open-minded. Like, I've known him since I was 11. He doesn't change he his doesn't mind. He doesn't change his mind. I know. I've heard everything. You have to, not everything. Dang, like you just talk Anyways. all the time. I'm a... <laughs> Before I get started, I am 17, I do drive, and I do have a car. I have a car, I have a job, all of that. Great stuff. Bro, I don't know why you did that. But, um... All right. That's okay. Good job. So, with relationships in high school, I think that practice is good. I am, like, you guys are like, um... You guys are like, you can have friends, you can have this, you can have that. And you're like, oh, if you get into a relationship and then somebody catches feelings, somebody eventually catches feelings after you get into a relationship, that's weird. If you already have romantic feelings, that's it's true. hard to deny romantic feelings when that's you true. already know that they're mutual. So, in a world where I'm assuming most of us are into monogamy, so I have romantic can, feelings for you. Can you just, uh, because some of them think you said mahogany, like wood, um, Mon monogamy. What? Monogamy is when you commit to one person and only one person, so For the I have one, yeah, like. You're not multiple. It's just y'all and y'all not going to get, you're not going to get no, another we, wife. No, we're not, not inviting nobody home. else in the right. marriage, so like nobody else. committing to one person and sticking with that for Yeah, good job. The rest. Good word, good word, you said, Joy. <laughs> Anyways, so most of us are into monogamy, and if you already have romantic feelings for somebody, it's hard to not have romantic feelings for somebody or not act on that. Okay. So if you do find somebody and you have those romantic feelings and you come into it with a mindset of oh I'm dating for marriage it doesn't have to be I'm dating to marry this person because like whenever you're going through courtship it's like I'm trying to see if I'm going to mm -hmm. so True. your boyfriend girlfriend situation is like okay I'm trying to see if I'm going to but if you have the right mindset about it if it ends I learned a lot and I'm not going to be heartbroken because I knew what it was when I got into it and I didn't set myself up for that so I don't think it's that teenagers shouldn't get into relationships. I think it's that teenagers shouldn't get into relationships with the wrong mindset or the wrong expectations. Okay, I like that. Very I have good. A, I, I really couple. like that. I really like that. Very so, good. Very good. So, um, Joy has changed my mind. Psych. I, <laughs> she said. Nah, I, no, I do, I do have a couple questions, though. I, I just have a couple questions to ask you about it. Um, you said that you were speaking, no, that was a good, I, I mean, she made some good, some good valid points. Um, but you mentioned about courtship, right? And you mentioned about the reason for courtship is to find out if this person is kind of the right one, if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly. So is courtship, though, actually somebody now being your boyfriend or girlfriend? Not in the Bible, but I think in the no, I mean, just in general. I mean, it's just like, yeah, because like, it's, I mean, yes, because, yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm just trying to get, to now, I just need to, I'm trying to understand yeah. your framework. Well, yes. Okay, yes. so courtship is. That's why you say like boyfriend, girlfriend, we're dating. Dating is the same as courtship. Like if I say I'm dating this person, I'm dating them exclusively, and that's why they're my boyfriend. Okay, okay. So you're saying pretty much that. In order to find out about somebody in that courtship phase, they have to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. No. I'm saying if you find somebody that, if you're, if you're going through dating and you're like, oh, I'm talking to this person, I'm talking to this person, I'm talking to this person, you narrow it down naturally. So if you narrow it down to somebody and you're like, I want to focus my energy and attention to getting to know this person, mm -hmm. then now we're dating because he's the only, we're dating, he's my boyfriend because he's the only person I'm courting with right now. And so if it doesn't end up working out, okay, I did it, and I can move on, see if I court with somebody else, but for the time being, I was courting, 
and then I found somebody I wanted to court with exclusively, and then so it just so seems so, so really it just seems like you just jumping in relationship to relationship to relationship just to no. see if y'all are good fit. That's not I, what I, I, that's what I'm. That's not but, what I said. No, no. Is that not accurate to what but, she's but, describing? But you, but you did describe if that's that accurate. you said if 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 that's that it, was not it in that courtship, you know? then I can go find somebody else and no, be in another not monogamous. In that way. Not in that way. If that's not the person it works out with, then I learned from that experience. I got what I got. And you move on. It's cool. Correct. You move on with your life. With so someone like, else too, though, right? If you move you, on with if two. If you find somebody person. else, then yeah. There's. A, <laughs> so like, it, 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 it like right. If so it just. Else comes Okay, so I'm gonna court with this person now. You don't just stop courting when you don't find the right. one that time. Okay, right. so the only so the only thing that I'm hearing different that you're saying than majority of people when it comes to the relationship is that you use the the great vocabulary of throwing monogamistic uh, monogamistic or, be, <laughs> or being throwing that into it. However, I, I don't hear any good reason of why you should like I haven't heard anything compelling to say why you should because I'm just hearing that you well you learn from is important? like when you were about to marry Eliza did you court her before that well we if you're asking me a question we courted before we were boyfriend and girlfriend okay. so so courting no that's, that's not what her definition is though so courting for us was us just like we're interested in each other I was highly interested in her. And we made that very clear. Like how you said, you know, you both have those feelings that are mutual. We said, okay, we're, we're both very interested in each other. Right. Now, first we were friends for two days. But um, then we was like, okay. Yeah, but we, but we were never friends. I yeah. always knew I wanted to marry this man. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> All right, babe, you can stop. So, so, but for, so for us, it was like, okay, now let's but, pause and seek the Lord about what, what we're doing here to see if we are permitted to go any further. And if we're not, because we have these feelings where you just got to go. I, right. We're not going to be friends. We're not going to, because I'm not going to entertain it when I know we have these feelings for each other if this is not something that the Lord is permitted. And so that's what it would look like for us. And so it was really kind of like a, it was really like we took a couple months and we were highly interested in each other, right? We, but we weren't, yeah, we were talking. We weren't yeah, boyfriend we were and girlfriend. Like just intern press, like we would be talking. Yeah, I, that's but, what we But not talking to, to anyone else either. Yeah, we weren't, okay. we, were, we were exclusively talking to each other. Yeah. Okay. Right? Happens. Right, it happens, right? Yeah. But, but we weren't in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship okay. until, uh, only because you asked. Right? Right, right, right? Until we decided like, okay, I think that this could go somewhere further. Right. I think that maybe we should like solidify this thing. And it's like, we're just going to like be boyfriend and girlfriend or for us, it was more so like. But even before that, we talked to a lot of counsel to see if they agreed. Yeah. Before, and we took time and like fasted away from each other and prayed just to see like, Lord, should we move further in this relationship. We wanted like, him to truly be in the center. So we took their, like extreme measures to ensure that God was within it. Right. You know, okay. and I think just the only thing I really had an issue with. So Nehemiah is very strong on like, you guys shouldn't be in a relationship. I agree that you shouldn't, but I'm, I'm also not like, I recognize that you're going to like that. That's going to be just as what you described, you know, like you're, you're I mean, I can't stop nobody from doing not that. I'm going to stop, but I, for, for me, <laughs> I, I know that it's, it's way, it's more serious for you. We're like, no, like you wouldn't let Carbonero have girlfriends, but we can talk about that later. I just, <laughs> for what? <laughs> they going to have girls flocking to him all the time. I know. Oh. They're so cute. Anyway, go on. But, um, so, so I understand that, but my, my issue, right, is this lie that practice makes perfect. The more relationships you jump in and jump out of, by the time you get to the one that you were actually supposed to be with, there's so much baggage and so much mess, so many trust issues. There's so much. And 
guys, it doesn't happen as beautifully as we all imagine, that this, this, this clean break, and we just go our separate ways. And there's just this clean break, and it's Give like, me a break. we understand that this isn't it, and so let's just go. No, there's a lot of stuff. That break is almost never clean. The, and, break, the break could be clean when, when there's ulterior motives for a guy in that relationship, right? In a sense of like, in a sense of this, right? Like if you really, if both of you all really have feelings for each other and both of you all really like each other, which could turn into like this love for each other, there's no clean break at all. But then there's some guys and some girls that just try to get in a relationship just so that they can smash. But that right? break isn't clean. Oh, you're Regardless, right, though. That break still break. isn't clean. It's never a clean you're break. You're absolutely right. I know, I know people who went through it just as we did, very carefully seeking the Lord, all of those things, and the break still wasn't clean. There was still some, some residue, you know, from ye when he got with his wife, from years, from that old relationship that he had to process through before he could marry the woman that God had for him because he was jumping in these different, well, it was just one for this particular person I'm talking about, in this relationship that he wasn't supposed to be in, and so it left this residue. The break isn't clean. Practice doesn't make perfect when it comes to relationship. That practice just makes a mess. When it comes to other relationships. Now, practice with your spouse, you know? What are you talking about? You don't practice with you, your you spouse. Practice, yes, you do practice with your spouse. You practice, <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You practice going handling situations. You practice going through difficulties. You pra yeah, but, practice through that. Right, right, right. But what I mean, when they're saying practice makes perfect, they mean if I get into this relationship with this person, then I learn this. In this relationship with him, I learn this. And then, yeah. Oh, experiment. experimenting. Experimenting and exploring and trying to learn. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I feel like that goes to my point of like mindset though. So like, like you said, your friend went through it, like he did, he did all the right things, but then at the end of the day, it was still residue, but he still got there. What? Oh. <laughs> Dang, you're just okay, going to try to take the mic. Not, what if it's not on purpose to learn it? Like, you guys are saying, like, what if okay, it's not purpose I'm gonna learn to this, learn it? To say this. No, like, you said that if we get into a relationship to learn not to do this. Like, what if it wasn't on purpose to not learn that? You're just trying to, like, adjust to, like, what you do when you're in a relationship. I don't think I understand. She's like saying you didn't go into the relationship desiring to learn something, but because of the situation in that relationship, you ended up learning from something. Is that what you're saying? It's still messy. Uh, <laughs> is, it worth, is it worth going through that to learn that? Yes. No, there's a better way I, to right. learn it. Well, and okay, I, I think you made some valid points. I think Joey made some very mindset. valid points. I, and the mindset, she I was think, saying, is very true. The mindset is... I'm go and what is the mindset? Like dating for marriage. I don't think it's too. I don't think it's too early for us to start dating for marriage. I mean, we're about to be adults, right? And then, like as you go through college, it's like marriage is. It's around the corner. Like you were young when you got married, and yeah. everything like that. So I don't think it's too early to be thinking about that. I think if you right. get into a relationship with someone who has the same or a similar mindset to you, agree. Then it doesn't have to be bad because you're saying like, I, I, oh, I, I don't get agree. Into a relationship I don't disagree with, with that. Like, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I it's agree. like, you're like, if you get into a relationship with someone, it's a clean break. If they had ulterior motives, it's like, yeah, no, you oh. spec their motives beforehand and you make sure you're getting into That's a relationship good. Okay. with the I, right I, person, you're doing it the I right agree. way, everything like that. I don't, I don't disagree with that, with what you said, but for majority of teenagers, do you think they're going into it with that mindset? Yes, but I think yes, should... majority. You oh, think majority oh, of? No, no, no. Oh, you mean with? Oh, I thought you meant with the wrong mindset. No, no. Oh, yeah. Do you think majority, I think majority of teenagers, teenagers are are going into it with the wrong mindset? But I think like, I don't know. It's like I've come up with my mindset by sitting in here and listening to you for the past seven years. So it's like <laughs> <laughs> you hear me four times out of a month. <laughs> so okay, I have other things to do now, but I still no, 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 no. no. No, I'm he saying, was saying literally. Like oh, literally. Four literally. Sundays in a it's month. It's only four Sundays in a month. <laughs> okay, yeah. But, <laughs> but still, it's been seven years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then seven. <laughs> I got you, I got you. And then Thursdays. <laughs> I got and you. And then Thursdays. <laughs> and vacation, like weeks. Like, I worked here. It was a, it was a lot. <laughs> it's been a lot. But like. Um, you're, you're different than a lot. Yeah, you're true. Yeah. You're yeah. So it's like, I think that 
if you get your message out there instead of telling kids, because I know you know that we're going to date anyway. So just I, like focus some on... Of, some of these God-fearing men and women of God in here, <laughs> some of them are going to wait until some. they have certain things lined up. And I do want to talk about some of those biblically too, um, so that at least we have some Bible yeah, to go with it. Book. But no, no, no. I like what you're saying. Finish. But you're right. Finish. Oh, well, it's just like if you get the message out there, then people can take what you're saying and apply it to the relationships that they're inevitably going to begin in anyway yep. whenever they get into them. And it doesn't have to be this like, oh, I'm not supposed to date until I know who I'm going to marry. Okay. This is true. That, that's fair. That's fair. I think you made some valid points. I think you made some valid points. Now. Now. Good job, Joy. Good, good. Good job, Orating. Right? Um, there are a couple things, though, just from the Word of God that we want to look at, though, when it comes to these type of relationships in general, right? We have the belief that, you know, dating is for marriage. And so if that is the case, if dating is for marriage, that means that there has to be some things that if you got married, y'all are on the same page about, right? Number one, like we talked about last week, God has to be number one in the relationship. Like it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Just like Jesus said as well, do not be unequally yoked. This is why it's very important. And for most people, in most teenagers, you do not care if, if they're atheists. You don't care if they're agnostic. You don't care if they're of a different religion. You don't, but that is important. Because now you're being unequally yoked. And so what happens is this. If it is for marriage in the future, think about this. You wanting to raise somebody up in your children in godly biblical practices, but your spouse or whoever this person is, is an atheist. And they're like, nah, we ain't teaching about that. We teaching the Big Bang in this house. Like, we ain't, nah, we don't believe in no God. We, no, we ain't come from God. We came from monkeys. Like, we evolved over time. And so now you cause friction, right? You cause friction, and you cause a butting of a head, and now the kids come up double-minded. Well, mom said this, but dad said this. What should we really believe? And so the importance of you are both following the true and living God, right, the God of the Bible, um, is very important. Just because somebody is good does not mean that it's God. They could have a lot of good qualities, Matthias, but it doesn't mean that it's godly qualities. But good qualities are good, but we're not looking for just goodly qualities. We're looking for godly qualities. Because there are some, like, there are some girls that are out here that's like, I'm saving myself to a marriage. But they may, and they may really be doing that. No, there are some, bro. If you don't know, and not everybody's corrupt in high school, I guarantee that. Now, there's just not the ones that you're looking at. You're looking in the wrong area. Oh! You're looking in the wrong you don't know space, it. right? But you but just don't realize. Are. But Amen. there are. And just like, just like there are some guys that are willing and wanting to wait, yes. right? And they're like, no, I'm not going to violate. <laughs> I'm going to be a virgin, you, you, you right? Y'all are like, nah. The guys no, too. there really are, there are guys like that as well. Now, not, do, is that your you type of guy that you think? Maybe not, right? However, there are people that are like that. However, my point is this. That doesn't mean that they're following God. Mm, it doesn't mean that they're following God. What you want to do is make sure, that's number one, if, if there is any opportunity for them to pull you away and not push you towards God, it should be an automatic no. Yeah. It should be an automatic no. Yeah. Right? You agree? Absolutely. Another one is this. We... Dang it, we're not going to get to our message at all. Another one is this, right? That's okay. <laughs> what about in the scripture when it says this? Honor your mother and father, which is the... Wait, wait, not, not leaders, not leaders. I don't, I don't want any leaders. Honor your mother. Somebody finish this scripture for me, please. 
Honor your Kind of. Okay, this is what the scripture says. Honor your mother and father, which is the first commandment with promise. So it's saying that this is the commandment. This is the very first commandment that has a promise attached to it. And the promise is that you'll have long life, right? You'll have long life. So automatically, if your parents, if you hide in a relationship from your mom, you hide in it from your dad, it's an automatic no because you're not honoring them. Yeah. If your parents don't, if your parents say, you don't need to be in a relationship until you're 18 and out of this house, right? That, right? And they say that, but you're doing the opposite, you're already wrong. Yeah. You're already wrong. Listen, it does not say honor your mother and father if they're 100% right on everything. It says honor your mother and father so that your days will be long. It's not for them, it's for you. And so if they are saying that they don't want you doing this in their house, because it's whose house? No, it's not yours at all. You don't pay not nan, none bill in that house. You ain't never, you ain't never did nothing but wash their dishes. You're vacuuming their carpet. You're making their bed, right? No, it's not yours. You ain't buy it, right? No, shut up. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're not supposed to say shut up, but shut up. All right? <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, though, and then I'll let you talk in a minute. My bad. We're supposed to honor and so if you're not honoring your parents in that and you're hiding a relationship or they don't know about the relationship and they're telling you that you shouldn't be in a relationship, but you're in that relationship or they're saying that, hey, I don't think that this is the right relationship that you need to be in. But you're still saying, nah, but ah, ah, you're already wrong. Yeah. You're wrong. And so that's another big one. Honor your parents in it. You have a question, Drayson. Somebody get her that mic. But my parents be tripping. <laughs> um, parents that like say, oh, it's okay if you just do safe sex. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Come Drayson. on, Grayson. Now, she made a point like this. Well, what if your parents are like, like how your mom, oh. You can say it. Oh, okay. I was, she all right. How your mom. She know what she did. How your mom was, right? <laughs> like, she was okay with Eliza having sex as long as. What? No, she wasn't. You're baby, doing you too said much. that. You said, baby, I don't want to put it out there. I'm the... not going to say she was okay with it. What she said was, if you have that desire, she never told me it was wrong. She never told me that I shouldn't. She just said, just come and tell me first. Yeah. So, so, so no, you shouldn't honor that because there's an ultimate it Sounds parent. like she's okay with it to me. But I don't want to be she's like, not saying I, no. I'm okay with you having sex. Like, that's not what she said. Okay, okay. Don't, but but don't, she basically, don't do. that's why I stopped, but she basically said that, though. I, I mean, mean, she yes, didn't say don't she have it. She's going to be like, I know you didn't say that. There's some parents that get that. But I don't know what would have happened if I told her first. Maybe she would have been like, no, and talked me down from it. So you don't know. Okay. Facts, I don't, facts, I facts. don't know. Maybe you're right. You're, that you're was right. her plan. All I know is <laughs> when she told me that at 11 years old, I just thought to myself, oh, no, I don't have yeah, so that was kind of wild. That was my, like, cycle talk. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Anyway, but to Drayson's point, Drayson said this. Listen, listen, listen. That was such a great point. I'm so glad you said that. This is a very good point. Well, what if my parents say it's okay as long as I'm having safe sex? Right? As long as I'm using a condom and I'm strapping up, we should be good. I mean, they showed me how to use the condom and everything. So if yeah. I want to honor my parents... I need to honor my parents <laughs> and lay down, right? Does that make it okay? Absolutely not, because, because ultimately we honor God's word over everything. So yeah. even if your parents are trying to get you to steal, no, you don't need to steal. If they're trying to get you to lie, no, you don't, because ultimately we ain't answer to God. And that scripture was definitely talking about godly parents. <laughs> yeah, it was talking about God. But anytime something is going against the word of God, it doesn't... If the government is telling you to go do something against the word of God, 
You say no because we honor the word of God over our government, over everything else. Yeah. Like, I, even over my spouse. Like, but if she was asking me to do something opposite of the word of God, no. Yeah. Or if I ask her to do something opposite of the word of God, no. Yeah. We, we, we honor God over everything. Yeah, I had an example like that. So, Nehemiah and I decided not to kiss until our wedding day. We never touched lips until we were at the altar. We did yeah. hold hands, but not all the time. But um, anyway, um, so, so that was our decision. We knew that we wanted to take extra precaution. I came from, you know, a lot of sexual immorality in my, genera- in my bloodline. You know, um, a lot of, you know, like women not married, having babies. I didn't want, you know, that to be my story. And I initially, really the Lord placed it in my spirit not to kiss until we were married. Because that wasn't originally my plan. I really woke up one day and said, I'm not going to kiss until my wedding day. And I'm like, what am I talking about? So it was really something that the Lord placed inside of my spirit. And I was really nervous to talk to Nehemiah about it once we got to know each other. But he actually bring it up to me. I never said anything to him. He was like, you know what? I don't want us to kiss until we're married. I'm like, this my husband. This, this, this right here. Mm. So, <laughs> so, so we took that extra We're precaution, married. right? But I had a lot of people discourage me from doing that, especially my parents and like people who are um, in authority over me. They were like, that is so stupid. Don't do that. They were also afraid that it would rush us getting married, <laughs> that it would rush the marriage. Um, and so, I was really discouraged from that, even though I knew that the Lord told me to do that. And so I could have been like, well, they really discourage it. But no, I know what God was saying. I, I have to answer to God myself. I, I can't go through them. He's not, I can't stand before the Lord and say, but my mom said, we're not talking about her. We're talking about you. You know what God is calling you to do. You know what's right. You know what's been placed into your spirit. You know what the word says. And if you don't, you must get to know that. Because we have an ultimate authority, an ultimate loving authority who is the Lord, who we must honor over everything. You know what's crazy? The same Bible that says honor your mother and father says to hate your mother and father, meaning to reject them the moment that it is against the Lord. So honor and hate. There's a thin line between honor and hate. Because the moment that it is in contradiction to the Lord, he says, no, hate it hate what they stand for, hate what they're doing. And so I love that. That's a very, very, very good point there. Now, we're not saying that you all, that the, that the Lord is saying that you all have to wait to kiss until marriage or anything no, like not. that. That, that was, was something that precaution. we but I do decided recommend it. that we needed to be because we knew ourselves and we didn't want to fall into sexual immorality. I knew that if I started kissing, I'm going to get the grip in and things is just going to start slipping, right? And so I, we you needed have to, to... say it like that. I'm, I'm just saying. So we needed to ensure that, right? However, however, one of the big things of... It was a really exciting wedding kiss. Like. It was, though. It was really exciting wedding kiss, right? But, however, and some people like... Well, what if they ain't know how to kiss? What if they don't know how to do it? <laughs> you you learn. You get to learn. All, all right? these things can be While learned. While you're married. Yeah. We have all of our lives to kiss. When you're like. married, you can learn with your spouse. All right? All right? So, one of the other big things is this. In a godly relationship, this is how you know. Number one, are y'all both chasing after God? Number two, are you honoring your parents in it? Number three, are you all both fleeing sexual immorality? Yeah. If one person is trying to, if like the scripture says, flee sexual immorality. This is the only scripture where it tells you to run from anything. Mm-hmm. The Lord does not tell you to run from stuff. He says, stand and fight the good fight of faith, right? He tells you to run from sexual immorality. That's good. He tells you to like, get up out of there, run from it, right? Get and up, so if anybody in this relationship that you're in or talking to or courtship, however you want to say it, is pushing and running towards sexual immorality, Y'all you should already know. For it. That's right, you should already know that that's a no-go. Flag. Right, throw the flag up, <laughs> right? And so Red you flag. all should both be fleeing 
sexual immorality. Both of you all should. It would not have worked if, if I was trying to run from sexual immorality and she's trying to run to it. Yeah. You're going to end up falling. So, you're going to end up falling, right? And then both of you all need to be running away. Somebody say away. Away. Somebody say away. Away. Run, Run away. away from sexual immorality. All right. Um, and then the last one that we, we kind of talked about, man, is just like wisdom. Are you on an island by yourself in the relationship? Does anybody else know about, are you getting godly counsel or wisdom from anybody? Right. Or are you just out here doing your own thing? Yeah. Right? Because if, if you don't think that you need any wisdom when it comes to a relationship, we just doing our own thing, we good by ourselves. like, that should be a red flag. Like, yeah. you, you, he don't never want to talk to nobody? What y'all hiding? What's really going on? Yeah. Right? So there is wisdom in a multitude of counsel. Amen. And so you want to get wise counsel, not your friends, <laughs> right? Because your friends can oftentimes lead you the wrong direction, right? You want to get somebody that's further along in life. You want to get somebody that's like doing what you want to do, right? Or going in the direction that you want to go. Get some wisdom. Go talk to Brian back there. That man got a lot of years of marriage, right? Like, go, to, go talk to somebody that has a good relationship. Go talk to Pastor Gregory. Like, hey, Pastor Gregory, come, bring him to me. Like, Nehemiah, we just, can you just meet my boyfriend and let's just see if he's really the, I can let you know. I'll let you know. Now, I ain't going to be judgmental right in front of him. Like, now look at her. Now, see how she's dressed? Why would you ever? Like, nah. Well, I mean, we're going to have a nice conversation and I'm going to pull you to the side. Like, Jalen, bruh. Bro, you could do. You know this ain't the right one, bro. Like, <laughs> you know this ain't the right one. All right. And so, um, get some wise counsel yeah. about it as well. Any closing remarks? No. None. We'll close with this. Out of all the relationships that are important, we believe that romantic relationships are very important. We believe that friendships are really important. We believe that mentorships are really important. However, the most important relationship of all, who cares, who cares if they check, if all the other boxes are checked, but you don't have that right relationship with God. Now, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. This ain't the time to talk about anybody else outside. It's time to look inside. If there is, if your relationship is not right with God first, God first is problematic. I just heard in my spirit the Lord say that somebody is like in a relationship and you know it's not godly and there's just been a lot of compromise and you have fallen in love with this person although they're not following the Lord and your love for that person is hindering you from going deeper in the Lord. Because you know that if you go deeper in the Lord, it will result in you having to cut this person out of your life. And so whoever that is, they're, they're not worth what, what you're losing to be with them. What you're losing in, in your disconnection from God is, is far greater than what you'll lose in disconnecting with them to connect with God. I hope that makes sense. But I heard that very clearly. The Lord is saying, you, you want to go deeper. It's like you want to get back. But it's like, I, but I love them. And I know that if I do, the result will be that I have to end this. You're afraid of what you'll lose to follow the Lord. But what you're, you're, you will gain is so much greater. There's so much more in what you'll gain. Don't hang on to something that's just going to lead you to death in the name of love. Because love leads to life because God is love. That's good.